dealers. For now, they'll get no further than containers like these at U.S. Customs. Customs officials say this latest step will put some bite into the policy to keep these guns out. Well, I think it's a practical measure because the initial measure would not have had any teeth if, in fact, you had a lot of valid permits out there so that people could legitimately still import hundreds of thousands of these weapons, then you would not see any real benefit to the initial order for perhaps years to come. But the move doesn't sit well with gun dealers and officials of the National Rifle Association who say they feel double-crossed. We were assured that the policy announced a couple of weeks ago was only to affect 110,000 new imports and would not affect the imports already approved. This dramatically expands it and we find it disappointing. Lawyers for some arms importers say the government could be in for a legal battle. One lawyer who would not be named said it's a multi-million dollar problem they've created. It means importers will go out of business and jobs will be lost. The lawyers are due to meet with officials of the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms next week. An official from the Bureau says the original ban announced two weeks ago had always included guns approved earlier. That statement conflicts with a Los Angeles Times report that says the agency, stunned by a recent inventory showing orders for such high numbers of weapons, rescinded the approval. The government says about 70,000 assault weapons have come into the country in the past three years. Several violent incidents, like the shooting of Vietnamese children in a California school, have focused national attention on assault weapons. The Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms believes it has the authority to halt the shipments under the 1968 Gun Control Act. But the fight with the gun industry is just beginning. Patricia Ox, CNN, Washington. The London Sunday Times is reporting U.S. officials know who is responsible for December's bombing of Pan Am Flight 103. The paper quotes unnamed U.S. intelligence sources as saying, members of the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine were behind the bombing and will be brought to the U.S. for trial. But U.S. officials say no firm determination of responsibility has been made. There's a marvelous bit of detective work going on in this whole thing, and it's incredible uh, how they're able to develop their leads. But so far as I know, uh, we're not that far along. We do not know specifically uh, who did it. It's election day in the Soviet Union, and it's the first multi-candidate election in that state in 70 years. Soviet President Mikhail Gorbachev cast his vote for the new parliament, which he helped create under his new policy of perestroika. Polls show the man he fired as Moscow party boss, Boris Yeltsin, is headed for a big victory. The three Soviet cosmonauts aboard the Mir space station were among the first to cast their ballots. They radioed their choices to Earth yesterday. The election will give the Soviet people a chance to share in the power of the Communist Party. Simon Vickery reports it's Gorbachev's biggest step in reforming Soviet society. Mikhail Gorbachev's gutsy push toward radical political reform began last June in a marathon address to the 5,000 members of the All-Union Communist Party Conference. He outlined a political plan extraordinary for the communist world. The party would share power with an elected government. Gorbachev's key proposal was to replace the essentially passive 1,500-member central legislative body called the Supreme Soviet with a powerful 2,250-member Congress of People's Deputies. 1,500 of its members would be elected by the people in secret ballot, multi-candidate elections. Together with 750 deputies named directly by the Communist Party and other official organizations, they would set general policy and select a standing legislature and president from their ranks. The Communist Conference approved Gorbachev's proposal for the new governing body. And in November, the 53-year-old Supreme Soviet voted itself out of existence. Yes! Yes! This week, yes! political campaigning in the Soviet Union reached a fever pitch. Yeltsin! 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 In Moscow, thousands of supporters of Maverick Communist Party official Boris Yeltsin packed city streets. Yeltsin had a falling out with Gorbachev 18 months ago over what Yeltsin called the slow pace of the perestroika reform drive. Yeltsin lost his junior Politburo seat, his job as Moscow party boss, and his seat on the national parliament. These new elections have offered him a vehicle for a comeback, and the people welcome him as a champion of the working class. Yeltsin supporters regard Igor Ligachev, the Kremlin's conservative number two man, as their hero's main enemy in the top leadership. 
Ligachev believes the country is changing too quickly under Mikhail Gorbachev's reform program. And while Yeltsin and Gorbachev don't see eye to eye either, Yeltsin's people say it's Yeltsin and reform or Ligachev and moving backward. Mikhail Gorbachev stands in the midst of this political whirlwind. What he proposed last June has now become a reality. But it comes at a time when food is scarce and food lines are everywhere, as Gorbachev battles to reform the country's agricultural policies. There is little doubt one of the first orders of business for the new Congress of People's Deputies will be to elect Gorbachev President of the Soviet Union. But what other business lies ahead for the Congress and for the political future of the Soviet Union remains to be seen. Simon Vickery, CNN reporting. In Houston, Texas, a grandmother, her daughter, and grandchild are lucky to be alive. Yesterday, their car fell into a hole 45 feet deep after veering off a road and crashing through some barricades. Firefighters later rescued them from the mangled vehicle. Hospital officials say the grandmother is in stable condition. Her daughter was treated and released, and the toddler is under observation. An Amtrak passenger train slammed into a flatbed truck at a railroad crossing in Trenton, Michigan yesterday, injuring about 20 people. The driver of the truck was trying to go around lowered crossing gates when he was hit by the train. His flatbed truck was loaded with steel coils. Amtrak is deciding whether to seek charges against the driver. National Transportation Safety Board investigators are due in Valdez, Alaska today. They're to question three operators of the Exxon Valdez, the tanker which ran aground Friday and spilled 11 million gallons of oil. Greg Lefebvre has more. Under a hail of criticism from environmentalists and fishermen, Exxon says it is pressing as fast as it can to clean up the worst oil spill in U.S. history. First, on behalf of Exxon, wish, uh, I wish to express our regrets for the anxiety and inconvenience caused by the grounding of Exxon Valdez. I want to assure everyone that Exxon is mobilizing all available resources to mitigate the impact from this incident. Exxon has assumed full financial responsibility for the incident. Late Thursday night, the Exxon Valdez, laden with one and a quarter million barrels of crude oil, crossed out of its shipping lane to avoid unusually heavy ice, and it struck a reef. The reef is on the navigation charts. Uh, the vessel is still aground on Bly Reef, about one mile east of the inbound traffic lane. Uh, about 30% of the vessel's bottom is resting on a flat shelf area, about 36 feet below uh, the surface of the water. Eight of the ship's 13 tanks ruptured, Our spilling about 10 million gallons of oil into the sea. The Coast Guard says several members of the crew have been administered blood alcohol tests now standard procedure. There are new regulations that came out recently uh, concerning uh, marine casualties, personnel, uh, potential personnel error, personnel, personnel action, that uh, uh, the issue of, of alcohol uh, is now regulatory. The Coast Guard has closed Valdez Harbor, cutting off passage in and out, including ferry service where Tom Faulkner works. Yeah, we're scheduled to leave tomorrow morning, but uh, I'm scheduled to go out on vacation, and my relief will be in Cordova, so I want to get it, go over tomorrow so I can go on vacation. You're stuck. We're stuck. Angry fishermen confronted Exxon officials. They're worried about the year's biggest fishing season, which opens next Saturday. We almost knew that it was going to happen sooner or later. Uh, this is the worst possible time it could happen with the, uh, the salmon fry coming out of the streams with the seasons just about uh, starting to open. It, it is the worst time, and, and uh, that was our major concern. Exxon is conducting tests to burn off the spilled oil or disperse it with chemicals, both preferred methods. And failing that, they will corral it with miles of floating booms and scoop it out. But that is the slowest and the most costly method. While Exxon says it accepts responsibility, it will not say that it is at fault. But the shipping company president did say that aboard the Exxon Valdez, all of the ship systems were operating correctly, including the navigation system. Greg Lefebvre, CNN, Valdez, Alaska. Up next, promising news for people suffering from high cholesterol. But first, let's look at the nation's weather.
can't change the way of the world. But you can take an alternate route in the Audi 90 Quattro. A car that sticks to the road, not to the rules. Because it assigns power to whatever wheels need it, whenever they need it. Ample reward for resisting the commonplace and taking the alternate route. This is my lawn, and I love to work on it. I feed it. I keep track of its growth, its thickness. I know every inch of this lawn, and if there's a problem, I fix it. I give it the kind of care and attention you just can't count on from any lawn care company. I mean, this may not be my house, but it is my lawn. We care and it shows. Ken Long, we care and it shows. The magic's gone. The minute the lights go out, you fall asleep. It's time to change your bulb to Philips. Philips Longer Life Square Bulbs last 33% longer than ordinary round bulbs. A cheese riddle. Excuse me, Giorgio. What do you get when you add mozzarella to an ordinary tomato?